Grab Life by the Goals is the podcast for passionate badasses to get inspired, activate their potential, and crush their goals. In a nutshell, we do big shit around here. Whether you're looking to disrupt your career, start or grow a business, or simply have a more kick-ass life, you're in the right place. Come to be inspired, find your swagger, dream bigger, and take actual steps to level up your life, all with a side of real talk and raunchy humor. I'm your host, Lauren Widrick. I'm a life and business coach, and I'm right here on the roller coaster with you. Are you ready? Let's do this. Welcome back to this week's episode of the Grab Life by the Goals podcast. And today's episode is for my wild ones, for my secret freaks like me, for the people who crave a bigger, bolder, wilder, weirder life. That's what today's episode is all about, is the fact that it's okay to want more. I think we've been conditioned from an early age or from society or from our friend group that we need to fit into a box and that the lives that we've built should be enough. We should just be simply grateful for what I have and to want anything more would be greedy or selfish. And I happen to think that's bullshit. It's utter bullshit. You can be simultaneously grateful for what you have and want more. And I don't necessarily mean more in quantity, like more money, more time, although those are definitely things you should want. I also mean more outside the box, like more different. You can want something that's technically less expensive, but more wild and weird or want an experience that doesn't cost more money but makes you feel alive, that's what I mean about wanting more. And I'm gonna use the term freak flag a lot in today's episode, and I wanna clarify that for a moment because I do like to talk about sex and freaky deaky shit, but not everything is about sex or about you know dirty jokes or anything like that when I say freak flag. It's simply the thing that's in your soul that's unexpressed. So when I say freak flag, it could be spiritual stuff, tarot stuff, extreme sports stuff, uh, baking, like whatever is outside the box of your normal day-to-day life is what I'm calling your freak flag. And if you're listening to this episode and it's resonating, I'm guessing that you have one. So I meet a ton of people and I used to be one. In fact, I still am one. A ton of people who have these good on paper lives. You know, they have the jobs, the car, the house, the kids, the vacation, the golf, all the things that they ever wanted, the goals they may have set for themselves when they got out of college, they've all come true. They have nice lives, but they're asking themselves, why aren't I happier? That's where I was and where I've been multiple times in my life. All of this is good on paper. Why aren't I happier? And I call this a vanilla existence. Now, no haterade on vanilla. Vanilla is a great flavor. And in fact, The majority of the population loves and prefers vanilla, but what if you're not a vanilla kind of girl or a vanilla kind of guy? What if you're more like me and you're kind of a fish food gal? So if you've never had fish food, it's a Ben and Jerry's ice cream flavor and it is so extra. (laughs) It's like delicious and rich. It is dark chocolate ice cream with a marshmallow swirl and a caramel swirl and chocolate fish, dark chocolate fish. It's like the richest, creamiest, most extra ice cream. It's the only word I can use to describe it. And that is my jam. That is my flavor. If I had to eat vanilla every day the rest of my life, it would be pleasant. It would be nice. But where is that like, holy shit, orgasmic, this is the best thing I've ever had in my mouth type flavor? That's what I'm going for in my life. And so there have been so many times where I have felt like a fish food girl in a vanilla world. And that can be confronting because again, you're wondering, is something wrong with me? Am I a freak? Not like in the fun freak flaggy way, but like what's wrong with me that I have this great existence and I'm just not happier. So I wanna share with you a few examples of where I was in that fish food versus vanilla predicament, whether I was experiencing it or witnessing it. And maybe you can hear yourself in that too, because the whole point of this episode is to tell you, you're not alone. Those hidden secret desires you have they're okay, they're safe, they're you, they're who you are on the inside. And I wanna be somebody that you can connect with on those things and just feel like you're not a freak, like you are okay, like you're safe to feel these things. So one obvious example that I've talked about ad nauseum on this podcast is my career. So being in the world of investment banking and technology to me was very vanilla in that it was good. 
right? There's nothing wrong or deficient with vanilla. It was a good title, good pay. I got to work in a nice office and put on high heels and, you know, I got promoted. Great. Why wasn't it more delicious to me? Why wasn't I getting turned on by the experience? Because it's not who I am. I wasn't allowed to fully express myself, talk the way I talk, do what I wanted to do, say the things I wanted to do, be around the freaky ass people that I want to be around. It was just me being fish food in a vanilla world. And so I know a lot of us can relate to that on a career level, but there's other experiences too. Here's one that a lot of my women listening will relate to. Who here has read Untamed by Glennon Doyle, right? That book will blow your damn mind because she broke the fuck out of vanilla. She was married to a super cute and doting husband, three kids, uh, brought them up in the church. She was brought up in the church and was thunderstruck when she fell in love with a woman. And the entire book of Untamed is about breaking yourself out of a cage and realizing that you are not a caged animal, you're a goddamn cheetah. So I know so many women, my clients, my friends, all of us, like our minds were blown when that book came out because we were like, oh, she did it. And all she did was tell her story. She didn't have any great parable or five-step tips to get untamed. She just was like, here's how I fucking did it. And it was weird and it was wild and it was hard and it required a lot of therapy and inner work and I'm still figuring it out, but I'm out of my cage. And so if that book resonated with you, you may be having a little bit of this like trapped feeling in a cage, maybe like (laughs) held hostage by vanilla. And you and I can relate on that because that book blew my damn mind. Another moment, which I'm going to be really vulnerable with you about, was when the show Sex Life came out on Netflix. So if you've never seen this show, watch it. It's it's tawdry, it's sexy, um, so many hot guys, so many sex scenes. That's not why the show resonated with me. It's about a suburban wife with the perfect life. She's got this gorgeous, affectionate, doting husband, two beautiful young children, a house in Connecticut outside the city, an extremely idyllic life. But all of a sudden, in the midst of all of this, she feels like she's lost who she really is. She's lost her wild side and she starts fantasizing about her bad boy ex-boyfriend in the city who, you know, was sexually thrilling but didn't exactly treat her right. And so the show has her kind of fantasizing about him and lightly contacting him and they start seeing each other playing with fire. It's a love triangle. It's it's a good, like, salacious show if you just want to escape a little bit. But it rocked something in me. And I told my husband about it and Sean Daddy was like, what is going on? Like, do you want to have an affair with some hot guy in New York City? I'm like, no, that's not exactly it. Although, if you've seen this guy on Sex Life, Actually, both guys, the husband and the boyfriend, they're so hot. No, that's not exactly it. But I could really resonate with her sensation of like missing her wild days. Like it wasn't all about him. It was her dancing in the city and rooming with her best friend and having adventures and doing things that made her feel alive. And her current life, as beautiful as it was, kind of felt like Groundhog Day. And that's what I said to Sean. And it was a tricky moment because he was like, Lauren, we have a great life. We have a great life. Sean doesn't have the same cravings for like wildness and adventure that I do. He's incredibly content with what we have. And so to be married to somebody that's like, yeah, I know it's good, but like, I want more. Like he was confronted by that. I was confronted by that. It caused like some conflict for us for a couple of weeks. And he was like, this fucking TV show is ruining our lives. (laughs) No, it made me feel alive. I loved it. So what happened was he actually surprised me with a trip to Vegas, by booking a trip to Vegas. So I came home one day and he was like, look, I can tell, like, let's get out of here. Like, let's get out of Fort Mill. Let's get out of the suburbs. Let's go to Vegas and wild out, like wild the fuck out. So we were going to go to one of those big daytime pool party, foam party, like probably swing by a strip club, if I'm being honest, like go eat delicious, like hedonistic dinners. Like we were just going to do it together and kind of like, get those itches scratched. And he's such a sweet, like (laughs) you saw him on last week's episode about what it's like to be married to an entrepreneur. You'll see, he's so supportive. Even though I was kind of freaking out and being like, my life is so vanilla these days. He stepped up and, you know, provided an experience where we could have some fish food together. So if you're feeling kind of like trapped in vanilla, getting out of that box can be really helpful. And I will tell you this, 
that trip got canceled. It got cock blocked because of the Delta variant back in August, September, whenever that was popping. So we never ended up going, but we did go back in January, not, not for a salacious, like, you know, fish food trip. We went for our retreat in January, but the point is he stepped up, he booked the trip for us. And I think I've never been more in love and we're still going to do it. We're still going to go to Vegas, just the two of us get ourselves in my 40 year old mom butt into a thong and shake it at a Vegas pool party because I love that sensation. I love the sensation of dancing hard and hip hop music and like, I don't know, gyrating. I don't know if that's the word, but like just doing things that make you feel ecstatic and alive and especially doing it with Sean is an idea that really, really turns me on and excites me. So let's talk about fantasies. Those dark, dirty little secrets in the back of your mind that nobody knows and you never talk about. I know what your fantasy is. It is slapping a resignation letter on your boss's desk because you started your own business and it's taking off. Does that thought turn you on just a little bit? If so, I wanna talk to you about Slay Your Side Hustle, which is my signature 90-day program to go from business fantasy to cash flow, your first paying client. This program teaches you literally everything you need to start a professional business, from products, to pricing, to marketing, to sales, to operation, to legal, to client care. It's literally the entire playbook. And you get a squad, you get a ton of partners who are with you along the journey and balancing the same exhilarations and fears that you are on the business building journey. The next round of this program starts on April 4th, 2022, and you get 12 field-tested training modules weekly group coaching calls, and a robust, mighty network to stay connected to your team in between the calls. It is a proven system that works. If this is turning you on, I want you to go to laurenwidrick.com slash hustle for full program details and to register if you're ready. And if you need a little kick in the booty to make up your mind, let's have a quick no pressure discovery call. Go to laurenwidrick.com and hit the let's talk button at the top of the page. And we'll jump on a Zoom and see if this really is the right next power move for your life and your career. Again, laurenwidrick.com slash slay your side hustle. And if you're a badass and ready to make your fantasy a reality, I want to see you on the inside. So I'll be honest with you guys about another thing where sometimes I feel a little bit trapped in vanilla is in my business. And that may be hard for you to believe because I'm constantly talking about the freak flag and making the dirty jokes. And yeah, that's, that's good, right? Like, That's vanilla with sprinkles, but I want fish food. Like I want to round up my clients and go to Mexico and have a retreat where we get sexy massages and cocktails delivered to us and like deep meditation and jump in the ocean naked. Like I would love to do stuff like that in my business. And I have dreams of being on stage as a stand-up comedian and just doing like wild and wonderful things in my business, like packing huge arenas of people and all kinds of freaky shit that I haven't even scratched my toe into yet. And I'm I'm in locked in that internal battle of like, I'm a business coach. I teach sales. I teach side hustles. Like if it's outside of that box, what will people think of me? And I was speaking with somebody yesterday and I said, if my own client were saying the things that I was saying, I would tell them to get their hot ass out of the cage, out of the box and go do it. Go do the things that make you feel alive. So I want you to know like, I'm not perfect. I'm not up here on a pedestal. Like I've figured out how to let my freak flag out. Like it's a journey and I'm constantly like ooching out like one butt cheek, then the other butt cheek, like to see (laughs) how far I can push the limit. But sometimes even your dream business can go vanilla and it can feel like groundhog day. Even if you love the work and you love your clients and you love what you do, you need that freshness. You need that new flavor in your life. And that's okay. It doesn't make you wrong. It doesn't make the business that you have bad. It just means you need to go get that extra little shot of flavor in your life. Okay. This is a small fish food moment, but I'd be remiss not to mention it. So I had a nose job. I had rhinoplasty four years ago. Now, if you're wondering like who did this rhinoplasty because you need your money back. It's true. It was a botched rhinoplasty. I'm looking at my video right now, you can kind of see there's still a hump. It's still crooked. All the things that I wanted fixed were not only not fixed, but they were made worse. So the vanilla versus fish food moment was when I decided to share that with the world on a previous episode of this podcast, The Risk and Reward of Authenticity. I was kind of torn between like, 
do I want people to know that I'm the type of person that would get plastic surgery? Is that too freaky? Is that too judge worthy, right? That I could be so vain that I'd want to fix my face. And then the universe slapped me upside the head and was like, nope, we're not going to fix your face. We're going to keep it the same. (laughs) And I ultimately decided like, no, I am that kind of fish food freaky person that like, hey, I get plastic surgery. I fully intend to get it fixed. I'll probably get other things done over the years. If that makes me a freak, it's okay. But sharing it with you guys on that episode made me really nervous about being judged because I think it's safer to be vanilla, you know, like everyone else, like accept yourself for who you are. And and I do, and you should, and we should. But if you want to change something, ain't nothing wrong with that too. It doesn't make you a freak. It just makes you somebody who desires something. And that's totally safe and okay. The most recent like fish food porn in my life was watching Ali Wong's most recent comedy special on Netflix called Don Wong. It's her third Netflix special. She is a comedian that I adore. And frankly, I I study and aspire to be like. So if you've only seen her on Netflix, she's hilarious. Her first two comedy specials, she was like seven months pregnant, being super duper honest about how fucking rough all of that is. And she was walking around cursing with this big pregnant belly. And I just was like, man, she is really putting it out there. Her third comedy special was hilarious. And in fact, I even saw it on the internet called feminist comedy, which I really liked actually. But she's up there talking about the struggles of monogamy. And so the big joke running through the comedy special is that she wants to cheat on her husband. And she talks about all the things she fantasizes about and all the things she wants to do and all the time she's been turned on. And Sean and I watched it together and I was like, man, first of all, I asked him, how would you feel if I was on stage talking about how I wanted to bone other dudes? And he was like, listen, I know you would never do it. I know you've probably thought about it. It would just be you if you wanted to talk about it. And I was like, damn, damn. And that's what she said at the end of the comedy special was that her husband ultimately lets her be herself and accepts her for who she is. And that's why their marriage is so healthy. I thought that was so cool. The point is, she put it out there. She had a thought. She felt safe enough to say it. And women all over the country are like, oh my God, yes, me too. I have the same thoughts. And she did a whole other bit about like a gut, like a poop issue she was having. And that bit was hilarious. And I'm like, she really doesn't give a shit. She is putting it out there. And there's a lot of us who adore her, like rabid fans. And I just really aspire to be that free and that freaky and not worry what people think about me. And there are people who think she's probably gross and way too out there and not a good mom. But you know what? I read her book. Her book is literally titled Dear Girls. It's to her daughters. And it is not just a book about sex and poop and pubic hair and all that stuff's in there, right? It is really a journal, a memoir of how she became so resilient, right? Because stand-up comedy is extremely tough, especially as an Asian woman. You deal with so many barriers, so much heckling, so much rejection. Um, It's a long road to get where she is. And the whole book is a set of lessons for her daughters. And they're going to know exactly who she is, exactly who she is. She talks about who she slept with, how this one guy couldn't get it up, all of these gross stories of how she met, you know, their dad and these other dudes that she hooked up with. She didn't hold back who she was from her daughters. And I just think that's the most beautiful freak flag. And again, there's a lot of people out there. There's the vanilla people who are like, that's wrong. You shouldn't let small children be exposed to that. And I'm pretty sure small children have not yet read the book, but you know what I mean. You shouldn't put yourself out there. You should shield your children. I'm not judging that point of view. That's right for a lot of people, but for us fish fooders, we actually want our children and the people in our lives to see who we really, really are on the inside. And I think it's safe to do that. So if you have a perspective on parenting or sex or life or career that you're afraid people are gonna hate you for, It's okay, maybe a handful of people will, but your people will actually double down on their love for you for being so vulnerable and being a lighthouse for people like them to radiate toward. So the point of all this is, if you have hidden cravings, desires, you feel like you have a secret identity, like a Sasha Fierce inside of you that's trapped and can't come out, you're in good company. Like, I'm with you. I have one half of my free flag out and one half I'm trying to gather the courage to get it out. But look at all these role models that you can look up to, the the Ali Wongs of the world, the Mel Robbins of the world, the Glennon Doyles of the world. 
who put their real selves out there and were championed for it. Like people adore them. They've changed people's lives as a result. And that could be you. The cost of keeping your inner freak hidden is not just to you. You will atrophy on the inside if you keep your real self hidden. You will literally wither away and die slowly, quiet desperation. But like, that's what that will be like. Or you could just put it out there, the risk and reward of being yourself, knowing that you will find your people and repel some others. And that's totally okay. So here's a couple of questions you can ask yourself to see if you're actually kind of trapped in a vanilla situation. Ask yourself these questions. So the first is, are you constantly talking yourself into why this situation is okay? Are you selling yourself on vanilla? So examples might be, yeah, I don't love my job, but I'll just stay in it until the kids get out of daycare, right? Or I'll stay in it until I get my next bonus. So it sucks, but I guess I'll stay for the time being. That is selling yourself on why it why you want to keep eating vanilla, even though your heart secretly craves moose tracks or fish food. Another is maybe in your business and you guys, entrepreneurs, I've been through this more than once. Like, ugh, I'm kind of burned out on this product, but it's a proven product. It's a money maker. So I guess I'll sell it a while longer so I can stack some cash so I can do what I really want to do. And that's vanilla shit right there. Either fall back in love. Like if the product has gone vanilla to you, like add some fudge on top, add some sprinkles and make it yummy or just be done and go get yourself a pint of fish food and sell something that you're actually really jazzed about. There's a couple more examples of how you sell yourself on vanilla. So for instance, when it comes to fitness, you can be like, oh, I'm so busy at work. This project is so demanding. When this project is over, maybe I'll try and get back in the gym. I'm super guilty of this one, you guys. And what you're doing is you're selling yourself on eating vanilla because you're too busy to run to the store and get fish food. Now, there have been times in my life where literally nothing stood between me and that fucking fish food. Probably when I was pregnant, I would either go get it, make Sean go get it, like DoorDash that shit. Like when you want fish food, you will go for it, but you're selling yourself on why you don't deserve it, why it's not the right time. I mean, this is true for like sex as well. I mean, a lot of us married suburban parents can relate. Like we're not having nearly as much sex as we want to, right? Because we're tired. The kids are sleeping in our bed. I got to work late, um, whatever, right? Like the reason I'm not having fish food is because I'm just so busy. This is the season of life. And all I'm here to tell you is like, fuck that. You deserve fish food every day of the week. And by the way, Ben and Jerry should probably send me a check for promoting fish food right now. This Like it is the most delicious ice cream flavor you've ever had in your life. It is so good if you've never had it. Another way to know if you're burned out on vanilla is if things just feel like Groundhog Day. That's where I was when Sex Life, that show on Netflix, kind of woke me up. I'm like, nothing's wrong, but nothing changes. Our life is very repetitive right now, and that's what's eating away at me. So if your job is the same day to day, your business, the stuff you do with your kids or your spouse are like the same, the same, the same, and it's bugging you, then you're burned out on vanilla. If it's not bugging you, you're good. That's the whole point of this. If it's not bothering you, keep rolling. If you're content and satisfied, like Sean actually likes vanilla. You know what I mean? He doesn't need all these crazy ass flavors. But if you need all these crazy ass flavors, you've got to switch up your routine in some form or fashion. Is anyone else craving a business conference? I'll tell you what, the biggest breakthroughs and the best connections I've ever made have been at in-person events. And I'm so excited to announce that we're hosting one. The squad and I are hosting the Scale to Six Figures Conference on Friday, March 25th in Charlotte, North Carolina. Now this one day conference will level up literally every area of your business from strategy to sales, to marketing, to PR, to branding, to operations and finance, literally every area and it's going to be a business building party. You're going to meet the coolest like-minded entrepreneurs. We're gonna to toast champagne, we're gonna dance. It's gonna be an amazing in-person event. Go to laurenwidrick.com slash conference to sign up and we will see you there. Another way to know you're burned out on vanilla is if you're only hanging out with vanilla people. So I'm kind of being hard on the soccer moms. I know a lot of very cool soccer moms, by the way, or cheerleading moms, I am one. But the point is, if your entire friend circle is vanilla, meaning they're all into the same thing, like if they're all into yoga 
and you're into CrossFit, right? Or vice versa. They're all into CrossFit and you're into yoga. Whatever one is the freaky version, you're going to feel like a freak. If you're the one of the only people in your world that wants something, likes something, is into something, then yeah, you're going to probably shrink away from it and feel small. So the best thing I can think of to do is get around like-minded people. Like if you are into weird culinary trends, like go out to dinner with other foodies. You know what I mean? Or like if you're into talking about sex, find your few friends that like talking about sex and go to a sex workshop. Or if you're into tarot, like go to a tarot card class because you'll probably find like-minded people. If no one in your world is into this freaky thing you want to do, then yeah, you're going to feel like an outsider and you're not going to go after it. Another way to know that you're burned out on vanilla is that you just have a yearning that won't go away. A voice in the back of your head that just won't stop whispering to you, come get me, come do this thing. It might feel like an aching or an emptiness or a void or maybe even a piercing feeling. And let me give you an example. This is how I feel right now about stand-up comedy. It's my ultimate dream. Like I have always pictured myself on stages and in the business sense that could manifest as speaking, but I really want it to be funny. I want it to be comedy. I want it to be hilarious like Ali Wong or like even Mel Robbins. I think she's so funny. And this ache won't go away. And so I think it's freaking time. I've been using COVID as an excuse and busyness in my business as an excuse and there's no way to monetize it as an excuse. It's all bullshit. So if you're feeling a yearning that just simply won't go away, it's time. It's your body. It's your heart saying, no more vanilla queen. Like you deserve that yummy, yummy fish food or, you know, whatever flavor you love. It's time to go for it. The the yearning's not going to go away. It's only going to intensify and you may as well go for it now. I think the last way to know that you're burned out on vanilla, seriously, physical symptoms will show up. And I'm not a doctor, so don't take this as medical advice, but I literally think when you're burned out and trapped, you get like skin issues, gut issues, sleep issues, all kind of stuff starts to manifest in your body and probably your mental health too. Again, I'm not an expert in that arena, but like if you're noticing that your like gut kind of feels heavy, you have headaches all the time, your skin is kind of broken out, it's probably like pent up energy in your body that's not being expressed. So if there's no other indicator than that, that you need some fish food, like break out of that box and see how your body responds. So the ultimate question is, why don't people break out of vanilla sooner? You know, I know I haven't at times. Why don't people break out of vanilla sooner and go to the freaky ass fish food, whatever flavor turns them on, whatever activity they want to do? Like, why don't we do it? We're ultimately terrified of what the world will think if it sees the real us. Seriously, let let your heart sit with that for a minute. What if the world saw the real you? What if the world saw you quitting your corporate job and becoming a life coach or finding out that you're the accountant who does an ayahuasca journey every quarter or that you're a soccer mom who raps to like ludicrous in your minivan? What would the world think that, you know, you were a suburban mom with a good job who loved to talk about blowjobs, right? They, they would reject you is our biggest fear. And I hope this episode makes you feel safe in that if people reject you, it's not about you. So this is what polarization is about, loving polarization. We're not here to push people away. But when you are your authentic self, when you let your freak flag out, yes, it's going to repel some people. There are a lot of people who don't like me. I have found that out in hindsight. There are a lot of my current friends who've said to me, I did not like you at first, but once I got to know you, I fell in love with you. And I know there are people who are just like, nah, nah. Like a lot of people unfollow me on social. That's actually okay. I'm okay with being misunderstood because the benefit of being authentic is that you become that lighthouse for people who want to do the same. So for instance, by me telling you all this freaky shit that I wanna do, some of you will listen to this and be like, oh my God, I thought I was crazy. I'm not, and you will DM me and we will talk and I will be like, you're not crazy, I want that too. In fact, my friend over here wants that too, you should talk to her. And it'll create an upward spiral of authenticity. It's safe to want what you want because not only will it clear those energetic blockages in you that burn out on vanilla, 
you will feel better. You will live a better life. And then you will radiate out that goodness to the others who need it. And whether or not that's your mission, whether or not you're a coach or a leader or somebody who's trying to help other people, it doesn't matter. It's just an act of goodwill, radiation, and vibration. When you feel good, others around you feel good. And then the ripple effect goes out from there. And I really can't think of any better reason to just be your damn self. Be your damn self. The world wants and needs you. The people who don't are simply triggered by the fact that they could never be so free, right? The people who can't stand Ali Wong, one, it's just, it's a pure preference and that's totally fine. But secondly, there are people that are like, ew, I can't believe she said that. And subconsciously they're thinking, I could never say that. I could never be safe to say that and actually be accepted in this world. So it really is about them, I promise you. So if you're feeling turned on and expired and your free flag is starting to peek out, there are a few things that you can actually do and take away from this episode. So the first is find your freak flag role models. I keep mentioning Ali Wong and Glennon Doyle on this episode. Find yours. And again, they don't have to be radical or sexual. They just have to be people who are doing things out of the box that you crave to do. And by following them and watching what they do, you'll see that it's not only safe to do so, the world will champion you and reward you for doing it. The second thing you can do is actually find your people, like find your freak squad. And the first person I want you to reach out to is me. And again, we don't have to have the same freaky desires. Yours can be to travel to Paris or open a school in Africa or go on a tarot retreat. It doesn't have to be my stuff, but send me a DM on Instagram and just let me know what it is and I will keep your secret safe, but we can vibe on your idea and I can help give energy and breathe life into it. The next thing I want you to do is actually get even more present to what it is that you want. Like you may think you want to go to a yoga retreat, but what you really want to do is like deep spiritual work with your inner child. I don't know. I just made that up. But the point is, get out a piece of paper and write down a hundred things that you want. Sean and I did this at the goal setting retreat that we went to in Vegas. It's called a hundred goals. And they push you to write down a hundred things that you want. Everything from, I don't know, redecorate your family room to go on an ayahuasca journey, to fly private, to get a new wardrobe, to donate to your favorite cause. Literally a hundred things. Write down these hundred things and your freak flag stuff will emerge. Like you want to be radically generous. You want to be radically hedonistic. You want to be super wild. You want to be very connected to people. You want to go deep into your spirituality. Whatever you write on these hundred things will actually come forth and help you identify your quote unquote freak flag so that you can go find your like-minded people. And then lastly, just let it out a little bit. You know what I mean? You don't have to, like in the show Sex Life, go start an affair with your ex-boyfriend. Maybe just try a new sex position with your husband or wife. Like spice things up a little bit. Maybe go take a class, right? You don't have to go to the Cordon Bleu Culinary School in Paris, but you can take a cooking class in your town and that'll make you feel alive. You can take a hip hop dance class. Like whatever turns you on, do it. And guys, hold me accountable because I'm ready to start my stand-up comedy freak flag thing. And piano lessons and other things that turn me on. I'll be doing those as well. So follow along on the journey. And like I said, be sure to DM me on Instagram and let me know your secret life fantasy. We will breathe life into it and give energy to it because you deserve this. You are worthy of the life that you desire. You don't have to stay in the box. You don't have to be a cheetah in a cage. You can be a goddamn wild cheetah, like Glennon Doyle says. You get to design your life and you get to be happy. There's no reason you can't. And again, you don't have to quit your job or do something drastic. You can have it today. You can have it within your mind and in your heart and with tiny, tiny baby steps. And to me, this is the definition of grabbing life by the goals. So I'll leave you with that, my friends. I'll see you next time. Connect with me on Instagram and let that freak flag fly and let me know when you do. (laughs) See you next time. Thank you so much for listening to the Grab Life by the Goals podcast. If you loved this episode, I would be thrilled if you subscribed wherever you listen to your podcast so that you can get notified when an episode drops and we can rendezvous like this every single week. 
If you're feeling frisky, maybe slap a five-star review on this bitch and maybe even some comments about what inspired you from this podcast episode. This is simply so more people can find us and join our squad of badassery. I love me some Instagram, so come find me. My handle is at Lauren Widrick, and if you screenshot and share this episode with your peeps, I'll come shower you with all the virtual hugs and kisses. Until next time, grab life by the goals, my friend.